Hey, what's up, y'all? This is John Reed, Reed Family Bacon, and today I'm back making my birthday cake. So you know I gotta show out a little bit. So we're making a turtle cake. I've never actually made this cake before. Made something similar to it uh, with the strawberry shortcake last year for my birthday. And right now I'm gonna show y'all the ingredients or at least the, the layers of the cake itself, which should be amazing. So first off, we're gonna start off with a chocolate cake base. Uh, homemade chocolate cake, already made it. You can actually use Pillsbury if you wanna use that chocolate cake mix. I highly recommend it. Uh, Devil's Food Cake is better than a regular chocolate, but that's, that is what it is. I uh, also made a, uh, the top layer would be a brownie. So I made a regular homemade chocolate brownie and I'll be topping that. Uh, you can also use Giardelli's chocolate uh, brownie. It's got uh, chocolate chips in it. Highly recommend that. So the only thing I can't relay like and show y'all is this really amazing cheesecake, which I have seen several times. I'm not showing y'all that because that's my bread and butter and the first thing I learned how to make. So yeah, y'all have to wait. So, but that's gonna be the middle layer. So to start it off, uh, we're just gonna jump right into it. So, like I said, we already got the chocolate cake. We're gonna flip it onto our base. Don't mind the makeshift base here. There's, I ran out of cake stands. So as you can see, chocolate cake base, uh, you can actually take the layer from the bottom of the pan, stick it on there, just so it meshes up all nicely and you don't want to have like cheesecake in the middle of your cake that's not what i want so usually like, as you can tell like this cake is like you can't see it like the moisture in this cake is really it's very very moist uh gonna maintain all of the gushy goodness of this chocolate cake this is why i love that recipe but to make this cake even better i'm gonna I'll poke holes in it just so i can get the chocolate sauce all to soak through and then i'm also gonna throw a little bit of caramel on this so you just go back and forth. Try to stay away from the edges if you can. And bam. So, so now I got the chocolate on there. I'm gonna do a little bit of caramel. Again, I'm not gonna do too much of this just because I'm gonna have caramel literally in three different layers of this cake. And I don't want a ton of caramel. I don't want it to be a caramel cake. So I'll move this around. I wish the bottom of the cake would have like held a little bit better so it makes a better picture for y'all, but overall like that caramel will soak into it and so now that i got that portion done we are actually going to make the center portion so i'm actually using uh parchment paper uh usually i use uh wax paper for this um but as i mentioned i'm about to make that second layer of cheesecake oh so one thing you can do for this cake as an alternate you could make two layers of chocolate cake versus doing the cheesecake and it still turn out fire so I uh, highly recommend you do that if you don't know how to make like a homemade like refrigerated cheesecake like I do. Um, so that way you can just make sure you can make this cake as well. So, uh, but for me, I gotta do it big. So I'm gonna make that. And I'm literally going around the cake itself. So you wanna wrap it around and make sure it's, it's as tight as it can so it can layer up the cake itself. So you're using this to frame your actual cake, the cheesecake portion, because the cheesecake is super loose. And especially since I made the cheesecake a little bit, I didn't let it settle as much as I should have before mixing the hot ingredients and the cold. So it's gonna be kind of runny uh, in comparison to what it normally is. So I'm gonna use just regular tape and Connect the parchment paper overall, and you you should still see this. For now, I'm gonna throw in the cheesecake itself. As I mentioned, this is a little bit looser than what I would like it to be, but it's still gonna do the job, hopefully. I know it'll settle up in the fridge, so I just gotta make sure I don't get too close to the edge when it comes to the layers itself. So now I just wanna make sure, I kinda put too much in here, but it's okay. So I'm gonna use my hand on the exterior to make sure that it doesn't go past that outside layer. So, and literally go around. Just wanna make sure you layer it and making sure everything is even because you will have a lopsided cake if you don't. But as you can see, just on the outside already, you can see the cake form into the cheesecake layer and it'll 
you'll see that when you actually take it out as well and put that top layer on. And then I highly recommend this cake sit in like the uh, refrigerator or you could throw it in the freezer. Like you don't want it to freeze too much if you do. So I would say like 20 minutes, 20, 30 minutes if you do. But like the actual cake itself, I, I do like it to sit overnight. I'm gonna let it sit in the fridge so that way it can actually settle up and hopefully turn out the way I want it to. In the meantime, I'm actually gonna make the icing for this. So it's a chocolate ganache icing and I already have some chocolate chips. I took two cups of chocolate chips, put them on the burner and we're gonna go check on them right now. We have our chocolate here, chocolate chips melting on the stove. Uh, use a double broiler, homemade double broiler. Um, so just take a pot, uh, have, do it like halfway with water and so that way it comes to a boil and you should see the steam coming off of it um, like you can go ahead like put the pot on there set it at like medium heat or high heat if you put on high heat make sure you watch it because uh, the chocolate can burn uh, but I usually put on medium to low so that way I can do other things while it's melting down as you stir it up a little bit while it's on the burner still just so you can see if all of the chocolate chips have melted down turn the burner off and then uh, bring this into a pad, like a heat pad. I'm gonna use my measuring cup and stick a half a cup of butter into here. So you take that, you put that, melt, melt it down, and then you'll pour it into the chocolate itself. I only did like 30 seconds. Um, it was already at room temperature, so it's not gonna take as long, but if it's refrigerated, it may take a minute. But again, just watch it, cause you don't want it to pop up and get your microwave all buttery. Uh, be a little awkward. Uh, so you have the butter poured in here. And then I actually stir it up a little bit before I add any other ingredients. You don't have to. Um, I personally like to see it all mixed up beforehand, just to make sure I get everything mixed together appropriately. Even though you still see some butter in there, it may get a little bit harder just because of the chocolate. Um, so just keep stirring it and it should start forming into chocolate, looking like a chocolate icing. But if you eat it like this, it's not gonna be good. So I don't recommend it. So we're gonna add a few other things to it to make sure it pops. So it's gonna take a half a can of evaporated milk. Uh, it does say shake well, so make sure you shake well. Um, and you're going to, wow, I haven't used this in a while. <laughs> Sheesh, like, <laughs> Sheesh, like, you ain't opened a can before in your life. And so after we battled with this damn, whatever it's called. After we did this, uh, you're gonna open your can, throw about half of the can, which is about 12 tablespoons of evaporated milk. I try to make it as easy as possible to do this because this is actually my favorite icing. So I don't really like chocolate. I love chocolate icing. Like when I started eating cake as a kid, like all of my cakes were chocolate, like chocolate cake, chocolate icing, like with Power Rangers. Like that was my my thing till I was like eight. And then I just like, just made me a chocolate cake. I fell in love with uh, Linda's Fudge Cake over at Cheesecake Factory. And then one year I spent like $9 on the cake and it was like the littlest piece of cake I've ever had in my life. Said, I'm never doing that again. So I made my own and been doing this recipe ever since. So you're gonna take a couple powdered sugar, pour it all in and then you just mix it. The biggest thing with this particular icing is the vanilla. So I'll do two tea teaspoons of vanilla as well. And that will solidify all of the flavors that are in this particular icing. And then you'll mix it all in and your icing is done. One eternity later. So, as you can see, I have let this cake marinate in the fridge overnight. And it turned out pretty good actually perfectly the way it was supposed to. So as you can see, the bottom layer again, chocolate cake. You structured the cheesecake portion of the cake uh, with the wax paper or parchment paper, and you stuck it in the fridge again overnight. I would prefer it to be a little bit smoother, so I'm gonna try to attempt to make it a little bit smoother without ruining it, but like, overall, like you can see, like it's very, very much so done. It's 
Like normally you don't have to do this, but I'm trying to make this pretty for y'all. Normally in the turtle cake, the bottom layer is a brownie from my dad's recipe, and he tops it with two layers of chocolate cake. But in the insides, he's putting pecans and caramel sauce. Personally, I'm gonna do an adaptation on that to make sure that I don't have any uh, pecans in this recipe. Uh, so, uh, and I'll just serve them on the side. But for now, I'm, gonna, I'm still gonna add that caramel layer. So I'm gonna make sure it's in the center portion. And you wanna do this as quick as possible because you don't want your cheesecake to melt. Again, first time doing this recipe and it's turning out perfect. I'm trying to make you proud, Dad. <laughs> Trying to make you proud. Now that that layer is done, of course you know you gotta add more chocolate. Again, I'm just using Hershey syrup this time. I'm not gonna add the icing. I'm trying to savor the icing as much as I can. So I'm just gonna add the Hershey syrup. And at this point, um, I'm actually gonna layer in the, the brownie portion. So I've already had the brownie. It, I had to overcook it a little bit. Uh, so it has that exterior crust. Um, but overall, it's still very moist, uh, maintain the moisture, uh, kind of broke off a little bit on the back part here, but that's fine. But overall, this is the homemade brownie that we had previously made. I'm just going to layer it on top. So the next time I make this, I might do the brownie first because the brownie is heavier than the actual chocolate cake, but it does layer up very nicely with the cheesecake. And it's a little uneven, but it's still gonna get the job done. We already layered on our chocolate icing. And at this point, I'm just gonna scope the cake itself. So I'm just layered, I literally just poured the icing right on top. This is a ganache. So it's meant to like run down the cake. I love a challenge. I love doing something new. And I think this might be a tradition of making a new cake every year. We shall see. Overall, I think we are good to go. Well, now that the cake is done to the point where I'm done with it, um, usually like if somebody's purchasing this, I'll do some decorative like, uh, so I'll put a design on it. So I'll put like Hershey Kisses dots of icing all around. And then I'll put caramel sauce in the middle of it, or at least wait until I get to the final destination of where I'm delivering the cake to. So that way the caramel doesn't fly all over the place. But uh, right now I'm about to cut this bad boy and I uh, think it's about to be amazing. My mind is telling me no. <laughs> so I'm gonna get the brownie portion first. You know what I'm saying? Cheese, oh gosh, that cheesecake layer that we had in there with the caramel already melted in. And of course, the chocolate cake. Fire. I kind of outdid myself with this one. You're welcome. Tell me happy birthday.